Hi. Hope you're well. Hope you've had a, a joyous and enjoyable Festivus season. In terms of Christmas season, I don't care if you've had a good Christmas or not, because I think Christmas is a pain in the rump. And I've already illustrated why I feel these things. But at any rate, I hope you're having a good end of year. I hope your year's been well. And it's been a busy year for me. I've done over 100 videos this year. That's a lot for me. For some people, it's just like, you know, some people do 100 videos in a month. But for me to pump out 100 in, in a year is a lot. I feel like I've been very active on this channel. So I thank you guys for watching me and following me and subscribing to me. And I really appreciate that, honestly. And I'm going to do a few more videos before the end of the year. So I'll get, I'll get deeper into that in the next couple of days when I do my end of year lists and stuff like that. And I'll just mention now that I do have a live stream coming this Saturday, December 30th, 2023. I know people might watch this video next year and think, oh, at the end of the, at the end of the week on December 30th and it's April. You know what I mean? So yeah, this is, this is December 26th, Tuesday, 2023 right now. So those of you who are watching this in the next few days, live stream on Saturday, I've already posted it on my live tabs. If you go to my channel, there's like a tab for videos. There's a tab for uh, live stuff. In fact, let me look. I'm going to look at my channel. I don't even, I mean, I don't even know how my channel works sometimes. Yeah, there's a tab for, there's a home page, then there's videos, which is what I do. And then there's live, then there's playlists, then there's community, and then there's membership. So you get all these options. You, if you click on live, you will see my upcoming live stream scheduled for 1 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday. But today, tonight, this evening, I am talking about this. This will be my last album focus of the year, where I just talk about one album. And there's no spe special reason for me to talk about this other than I love this album. And I've been listening to it a lot lately. And I don't really have a schedule or any predictable pattern in terms of how I listen to this or when I listen to this. but. When I do listen to this, I am always reminded how beautifully this album has aged and how much I love it so. I do love this album. I think it's by far Julian Cope's best work. And that's saying a lot because I am a, I'm generally a big Julian Cope fan. Not such a big fan of anything he did prior to this. Like I, I have a passing interest in the teardrop explodes and his solo stuff in the 80s but i think this is where he took off this is where he blossomed into who we know him to be today peggy suicide this record and it just dawned on me yeah huh i'm doing this video and i when i put peggy suicide in the title i think there's no way i'm going to be able to monetize this video because the word suicide is in the title that's that's like a trigger word for youtube you can't even say the word in your title otherwise you get you know they don't shut you down but you can't monetize the video oh well that's the name of the album and that's what i'm putting in there that just dawned on me just now Ooh. that this is a fantastic album hasn't aged at all still sounds great this came out in 1991 so it's 32 years old now over 32 years old now which is just crazy. I can't believe I've been listening to this record for that long. But I'm going to talk about this. And all of the singles and 12 inches that came out surrounding and connected to it. This, I, I, to my knowledge, I think Peggy Suicide is simply supposed to be a pun on Peggy Sue. The old Buddy Holly song. That's how I always took it. I don't think it's supposed to have any deeper meaning. I think people have... I think people have posited that Peggy Suicide is referring to Mother Earth. I mean, that sounds reasonable. I always just thought it was a pun on Peggy Sue, Buddy Holly. 
He was kind of flipping it on, on its head in a way. But it would make sense that Peggy Sue means Mother Earth. I mean, you get you get this image on the cover, kind of a planet here. I don't know, that makes sense to me. Here's the back cover. There he is. And I, I'm not going to break down everything about Julian Cope. That's for some other person doing channel, doing his own, her own channel on YouTube. I'm not here to just blurt out, vomit out stuff you can look up on Wikipedia. People who find this, you know who jo Julian Cope is. I don't think anyone's going to accidentally stumble on this on this video if you don't know who Julian Cope is. This is the track listing. I'll go through this. Yeah, this is obviously this is the vinyl release. Really nice packaging too. I'll get into that in a minute, but Peggy Suicide to me has always been a record about Cope's hatred of the material world, hatred of politics, hatred of a vastly richly hardcore conservative values, how we're destroying the earth. It's his it's his take on how we need to respect women more. He he had there's some tracks on here about misogyny that are just brilliant. I think this is just Julian Cope barking about what he sees wrong with the world. It's a very political album. They don't really make those anymore. It's very rare that you hear an outwardly political record. And this is very much so. And all, all of his, you know, everything after this, especially, all of his records have some very pointed political message. For me, this is the best one. I might do another video on Julian Cope in the future, but, you know, Otto Geddon, Jehovah Kill, 20 Mothers, you know, he's he's got a lot to say about stuff that moves him. And by the way, this is a side note. I would recommend picking up Julian Cope's books, too. He writes some fantastic books. I've got a couple. He, he wrote a, a book, I don't know, six or seven years ago. It's called Compendium. He writes about music and his love of certain types of music. He, he did a book called Jap Rock, where he talks about Jap, Japanese psychedelic rock. And then he has another book called The Kraut Rock Sampler, which is my personal favorite. He writes about his favorite Krautrock records. He is not only is he an artist in his own right, creating and doing what he does here on his albums, but he loves music too, and he and he loves talking about it. And he's very articulate and passionate about it. I would pick up his books at any cost. His books are really really good. Anyway, he writes about a lot of his songs too, and I'll get to that, but. To me, Peggy's Suicide has always been that record about his disgust with the way humanity is. How we're destroying the planet, how we're destroying ourselves. And never more so than here on Peggy's Suicide. Really fantastic record. Great stuff. There, this is a double album filled with fantastic tracks. There's nothing wrong with this album. And the more I listen to it over the years, the more I realize there's just more hiding behind all of its nooks and crannies. There's always something to discover about this record. I listened to this all the time when it came out. It was one of those, uh, it was one of those come down records. And during this time in the early nineties, particularly, I was listening to a lot of like, electronic music and rave music, techno house, ambient. And when I was done raving for the night, this is one of those albums I'd put on afterwards. Kind of, bring me down and just something different than hearing the pummeling of the four to the floor beat. This was a nice alternative to that. Speaking of four to the floor beats and dance music, Peggy Suicide has a, a pretty close connection to the KLF too. I'll let you discover that on your own. Julian Cope and Bill Drummond definitely know each other very well. I don't think they talk anymore and they haven't for years. Bill Drummond was Julian Cope's manager for a time when he was in the Teardrop Explodes, and they wrote songs about each other. In fact, Julian Cope refers to Bill Drummond here, too, through this album, some of the singles in particular. I'll let you uncover that yourself. I want to leave some mysteries to that. But you KLF fans, if you weren't aware, go look up the connection to Julian Cope. This whole, 
this represents a big circle of people that I really respect. Julian Cope is in that that KLF bubble, or rather, KLF is in the Julian Cope bubble. However, you want to look at it, they were all working together at one time or another. But this record represents. This is what makes this album so timeless for me too. It just represents a lot of frustration with the way this world is. He talks about politics. He talks about misogyny. He talks about how we're destroying the earth. He's ta he talks about the apocalypse. Just his general disgust <laughs> with humanity. And he does it quite beautifully on this record. Here he is at Stonehenge. Got the dude in the mask right here. Got, again, this lovely list of tracks. Man, let me, well, let me show the physical product to you here first. Very nice release, always was. You got a nice gatefold here. Extensive. He lays out the lyrics for you, and he also talks about the tracks, which is super cool. Um, I think he does the lyrics, right? Is this the lyrics? Well, he writes about, he writes about the actual songs here. This is, he's a great writer too. Let's see, like, here we go. Like, if you love me at all, he kind of, he offers a commentary to each track. If you love me at all is a doubting Thomas relationship taken to a weeping, whinging, but pretty sexy conclusion. He does that to varying degrees on all the songs, as you can see. That one I just read to you is very brief, but he, this is all commentary. These are not lyrics that you see here. So he explains where he was coming from on these tracks. I always thought that was kind of cool. If you have any questions about where he was when he wrote this album, he breaks it down for you. There's nothing mysterious about the content of these records. And there's two of them. There's Inner Sleeve number one. The labels aren't anything to see. It's just those generic island labels that you saw during the 80s and 90s. There he's playing live. I don't know. I think he mentions where that's from. Let's see. Where was this? Photographer taken at... Sorry, my light just went out. Come on, come back. Taken at Lambeth Bridge, London. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing this. Lambeth? Lambeth? I don't know. Lambeth. And I always get, I always get attacked for mispronouncing things. Hey, look. I can't pronounce everything perfectly, all right? I'm not perfect. You guys would mispronounce things too. Give me a break. This is the boring labels you see. You get that on all four of these labels, but all four sides are just chock full of, of cuts, man. There's not a bad... To have a double album and not have any bad songs, that's a pretty big testament. And, and the, the personnel on this record is really cool too. He, he has Hugo Nicholson doing engineering and some mixing and production on here. Hugo Nicholson is one of those unsung guys, I think. You know, he was part of Screamadelica, Primal Scream. He did a lot of remixing work. He worked with that Patrol Emotion. Go look him up. Hugo, Hugo Nicholson was on a lot of brilliant records in the late 80s and 90s. Again, one of those unsung guys. I remember he worked with Andy Weatherall a little bit. They were all kind of connected there. This was produced by Donald Ross Skinner, mixed by Hugith, Hugith Nicholson. There you go. And my favorite cuts, Pristine is a, a brilliant way to cut, start the album. Just a very, a, a very soft, it's basically almost an, acu an acoustic track to start off. It's just a guitar and Julian Cope singing and it kind of builds and swells. No drums, but it still builds and swells. Pristine is basically, I don't know, I don't want to try to, I don't try, want to try to decipher what these songs mean. They mean something differently to everybody. I have my own personal view of what Pristine is about. Double, and he'll tell you here too. So it's kind of hard to misunderstand what he's singing about. Julian Cope's not really interested in having a lot of ambiguity with this record or anything he does. He's very pointed and direct about his messaging. To the point where he comment he, he commentates his own songs. 
Double Vegetation, that's more of one of his hard rocking tunes. East Easy Rider, which was a single, and I'll get to that in a minute. Promised Land, another one of his slow ballad ballady tracks. One of my favorites, actually. Hanging Out and Hung Up on the Line, hard rocking tune. Safe Surfer, that's the tune, right? Safe Surfer. What a great song. Arguably my favorite on this record. In fact, Side 2 might be my favorite. The, the, on Side 2, you get Safe Server, If You Love Me At All. Brilliant song. And then Drive, she said. A hard rocking tune. But Safe Server and If You Love Me At All are just outstanding songs. Safe Server, arguably his greatest song. Just a really intense builder. Not a lot of lyrics. It's just mostly instrumentation, but it's very intense. It builds, it swells. Excellent production. The, the lyrics are limited, but they're very powerful. And Safe Surfer, to my memory, is just Julian Cope singing about how men are dogs and, and lying pigs and will say anything to get inside a woman's, a woman's pants. And he's very direct about that. If you listen to the lyrics, it becomes kind of apparent that that's what it's about. Let me read what his commentary says, actually. I forget what he says. Safe Surfer is that guy we all know. You overhear him with some girl saying, I'm not like the others, darling. Don't you trust me now? Like HIV ain't never coming down. There you go. So it's, a, it's an eight-minute song, very limited lyrics, though, but th he drives the point home. And the instrumentation does the rest. Beautiful track. Just fantastic song. One of his best, if not his best, I think. Soldier Blue, You, Not Raving But Drowning, Head, Leper Skin. I mean, these tracks have are heavy on rhythm. You can find some Calypso and vibes in some of these songs. I mean, he's all over the place. All over the place. Beautiful Love. Talking about Calypso. There's definitely some Calypso vibes going on with Beautiful Love. That That's probably the one, out of all of his songs he's ever released, that's probably his most well-known solo track. I, I could be wrong on that, but it's Beautiful Love, isn't it? That's his hit. That's the one that everybody knows. I remember there was a video they showed on MTV a lot back when this came out. It's a video of him just swimming with dolphins. I think that's what the song's about. He had this deeply re religious experience swimming 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 in the wild with dolphins and you'd think that would be a pretty exciting experience i've never done it but i can't imagine how amazing that would be uptight western front 1992 ce hung up and hanging out to dry the american light las vegas basement that reminds me too you get tracks on this vinyl edition that you don't find on the cd and the cassette now i don't remember if the digital version is like that too i'm not sure but you get extra tracks on the vinyl so it it's one of those instances where you know julian cope's a record buyer himself and he made sure you got extra shit when you bought the record and when i say record i mean vinyl people call albums records i don't know that they do that much anymore but back then you made a record you released a record and they weren't talking about formats. They were just talking about albums. Uh, album and record meant the same thing. Not so much anymore. But my mind is still kind of in there. Sometimes they say, hey, they put out a new record. What I'm trying to say is new album. Anyway, this is an absolute stone cold classic. I've been listening to this a lot lately. Just beautiful. You Julian Cope fans, what's your favorite album? Would it be this or something else? What would it be? For me, it's, it's Peggy Suicide. I love everything Julian Cope has done since this. I love Otto Geddon, Jehovah Kill, everything. Uh, I just think 20 Mothers, I think, is a very underrated piece of, piece of work. There's some great stuff he's done in, in, since, since this. And he's still around. I think he spends a lot of time writing. I don't know that he spends a lot of time putting out music as much anymore. But anyway... Um, this is, I'm going to walk you through his singles now from this album. This is Beautiful Love. We're just talking about that. This is all UK stuff too, unless otherwise noted. This is a UK 12 inch of Beautiful Love. You get your B-sides here. Little pup. I think this is Drulian, right? Yeah, Drulian. The Arch Drood. Again, look up, look up his background. 
He's got pr some pretty intense beliefs. I'm going to try to stay. If I get, if I, if I stray off the beaten path too much, I'm, this video is going to be an hour long. I want to try to keep this under half an hour here. There's a lot to say about this guy is what I'm trying to say. Maybe I'll do another video where I just talk about Julian Cope in general. I love that. I love him. He's a character, man. He's got a lot of intense beliefs. The 12 inch. There are the four cuts you get. And there are multiple, multiple iterations of this. Let's see. Is it Port of Saints? Port of Saints, he talks about Bill Drummond. Yeah, here it is. Port of Saints is self-explanatory. Balf, as in David Balf, and Bill Drummond now exist only in my unconscious. And Yeah, only in my unconscious, but I shall always be paranoid of their desire to do me wrong. Again, look into Julian Cope and Bill Drummond's history. It's, it's fascinating. Quite a timely slag off, really, as Drummond has just seen fit to release all kinds of old material without making anyone, without asking anyone's permission. That poor guy, ever, ever the entrepreneur, torn between 80s wasp intellectual caca and a superb organizational ability. <laughs> so, yeah, Cope and Drummond have a lot to say to each other, about each other. This came out in 19, was it 91, right? 91, yeah. So... The KLF were in like full form back in 91. They were still around and they're pumping out records and Cope had a lot to say. But that song was inspired by, by Drummond. You also get, you get the album version, you get a remix of Beautiful Love. I think Hugo Nicholson does it, yeah. More commentary. Hugo Nicholson took the poor innocent song and introduced it to a weekend in the big city. The obvious results are clear to see like Rita Tunningham and Lynn Redgrave and something, it's hard to read in here, it's dark. In Smashing Time, Beautiful Love got laid, got drunk, and got hung over and hoping to die. Remix engineers, I shit them. There you go. That's why we love Cope. He's, he's full of opinions and personality. That's why I love him. He's not afraid to state it all over his records. Constant commentary. I'll show you the label. I think it's just got those island labels. Really, there's nothing to see here. There you go. They all have that. He was on Island. Island didn't want you to forget that their artists were on Island. They were constantly reminding you. Nicholson's remix of this is okay. I don't know. It's Beautiful Love was never my favorite cut. In fact, this might Beautiful Love might be my least favorite song on this album. That's usually how it happens, right? Like the it's it's the obvious single. You know, it's the catchy pop-tastic radio tune of the album, but that's not really what Peggy Suicide is. Beautiful Love sticks out, but I don't know if it sticks out in a good way. It doesn't really mesh with the rest of the album. I think Beautiful Love is there to lull people in, but I don't think it's a good representation of what the album is. This is a limited edition Beautiful Love. <clears throat> version, excuse me. This has, obviously on pink wax, it's got its own little plastic sleeve here. This has the same remix of Beautiful Love on it, but then the real, well, this is Beautiful Love right here, as you can see. But the real draw is right here on the B-side, Dragonfly. This is like a nine or ten minute, just like tribal dance, more dancey jam. This is another thing I love about Peggy Suicide are its remixes and B-sides. If you if you take the time to dig into this album and get all of the singles, you're going to be treated to some really, really nice songs. And I'm pretty sure the deluxe edition, it got released on a double CD 15 years ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago. I noticed on Apple Music that it's all on there, the full, the full version. So you get all the B-sides, you get the remixes. There are only a couple of cuts that are not there. In fact, there, it's mainly the B-sides. Like, the B-sides I just showed you from this are not all on that digital version. So if you're looking for all the versions and all the songs, you're going to have to pick up these records. Anyway, Dragonfly. Phenomenal track. Love this song. Fantastic B-side. It is on Pink Wax. It doesn't sound great. It was in these cheap... They came in these cheap plastic sleeves, so it kind of creates this weird film on the on the surface of the records, causing a little bit of surface noise. Not a big deal. 
But I would recommend picking this up for Dragonfly alone. I think Dragonfly is better than the remix of Beautiful Love. This is the UK release of East Easy Rider. You get, again, one of my least favorite songs on Peggy Suicide. I think the singles are the weakest tracks on the album. The real gems are all the other songs. In fact, I think Safe Surfer would have been a pretty good single. I think that's a brilliant song and it could have been a good single. Maybe they thought about that. I don't know. Here is the reverse side. The B-sides you get on this little baby are Butterfly E, Almost Alive, Little Donkey. So three more B-sides. And by the way, the B-sides are great. I think any number of these B-sides, if not all of them, could have fit on the album. Cope was on a serious roll here, man. I'm not going to show you the label. It's just Island again. He was on a serious roll. B-sides, fantastic. Album tracks, fantastic. Remixes, really good. He was doing no wrong. This is a promo for East Easy Rider. This came, East Easy Rider came out on a picture disc. I have, actually, I have a picture disc from this album. This came out as a picture disc. This is the promo I have right here. But I'm actually, I'm glad that I have the promo instead because it just comes on plain old black wax. It's just a white label. There's nothing to see. It's just white labels. But this basically has, it has um, the remix, a remix of East Easy Rider. That 12 inch I just showed you does not have the remix on it. It has a remix. Pretty sure it was done by Hugo Nicholson. And it also has the B-side. What was the B-side called? I See, it's a white label. I don't even remember what it's called. This was written on it when I picked it up in one of my record pools. Someone wrote on it. This might be the label that wrote this. I thought it would have been cool if Cope had actually wrote, written, wrote that on there. I don't think he did. In fact, I'm sure he didn't. But yeah, I don't know how rare this is little white label action what is the b-side to this track i can't remember it's, it's it, the this generic inner has a stamp on it it's a great b-side i don't know you know what let me look it up i know this is really exciting watching me look things up but i want to i want to remember what this b-side is called because it is really good really good and it is not on the domestic 12 inch it is only on this promo. I don't think it is, at least. Raveberry Stones. That's the name of the track, the, the cut on the B side. Let me see if that's. Oh, it's on the picture disc. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is on the picture disc version. So, yeah, it's. I, I can't imagine. Let me see. Is this hard to get? Oh, no. The picture disc is easy to get. Yeah, it's all over the place. Raveberry Stones. An 11 and a half minute just rhythm track no vocals kind of what dragonfly is but ray berry stones i think the, one of the best cuts from this entire album singles and album ray berry stones pick this up the hugo nicholson mix is okay east easy rider isn't my favorite track it's it's a pretty good i like this mix mix better than the beautiful love mix i'll say that but ray berry stones get these 12 inches for the b-sides not the remixes Okay, here is another, the third, there are three singles from this album. This is the Head EP, another UK release. You get three other B-sides, you get Straw Dogs, Anyway at All, Ragged Out Ken. Three more B-sides, I'm not showing you the label, it's just an island label. More commentary for each track, as you can see, as always. Julian Cope has a lot to say, and that's why we love him. I always love hearing what he has to say. He's got a lot of interesting things to say. And this is the picture disc I have for this. And as I look at this, I don't know. I don't even know. Why did I get this? I, I usually hate picture discs. Oh, oh, it was the B-sides. Yeah, this is this is a picture and it's the record. I think this might be the first picture disc that I've shown on this channel. Not a big fan. The sound quality to picture discs is always shit. Save your arguments, okay? I know there's somebody out there going, that's not true. That's not true. Do picture discs get... No, picture discs sound like shit. They always do. They always will. They are not meant to be played. Yes, you can play them, but they're meant to be looked at. This is a picture disc. This is a novelty piece. 
Here's the B side. Again, bring Chair Hill down. And you get both versions here. I think I think the vocal version is on that, that digital deluxe version, but you don't get the instrumental. So if that matters to you, and I think that's why I still have this, is because it's got that instrumental. It's a really good track too, man. B-sides, I'm telling you. And another Hugo Nicholson mix of Head. Good, it's, it's a good mix. I like Head. It's a good song. And the remixes are not bad. Or rather, the remix is not bad. And this came, this came in like this box. This, it's got a flap to it. It's been smashed since then. You know, it's been, I've had it wedged in with other records ever since I've had this. Here's the back of the box that, that the picture disc goes in. Probably not meant to last exactly, but I've kept mine in pretty decent shape. Anyway, just another record from this great album. And then here are a couple of U.S. oddities from this album. This is called Dancing Heads. This got released for the U.S. market. This basically has all the remixes on it. This compiles all the remixes. It's a promo. There's the old-fashioned promo stamp. You get head. head. The head remix is like a, a radio edit mix. And then you get the Long Meg. Long Meg and her daughter's mix. The Beautiful Love remix and East Easy Rider remix. All Hugo Nicholson mixes. Kind of cool that the U.S. market compiled them all here. No B-sides in the in the United States market. That never happened. I'm not going to show you the label. Just more island stuff. And then this is just kind of an oddity. You know, it just dawned on me, too. There's one record from this era that I don't have in front of me. He put out a 7-inch. He only, he only handed it out at, it, during his tour for Peggy Suicide. It just dawned on me. It has like um, it has like uh, demo versions of Safe Surfer and If You Love Me at All on it. It's got like a picture. It's like a the picture on it is like a fake condom commercial. And there's a naked woman like surfing on it. You guys know what I'm talking about? Does anybody have that? I have that somewhere. It's not here with me. Sorry. My seven inches are hard to find. I usually just I usually only have twelve inch records, but my seven inches get lost in the shuffle. Anyway, this was a U.S. release. This was like a sampler. It's It's got just a number of tracks from the album. Basically, you can see the tracks it's got on here. There are three songs on each side. And this they didn't release this on vinyl in the U.S., but they did put this out. Just a, a sampler. Really boring cover with a promo sticker on it. I had this with my Julian Cope stuff, so I thought I'd show this. Just as a curiosity piece. But anyway, those are those are my Peggy Suicide records. And I really love this record. And I hope those of you who have never listened to this record somehow, and you're watching this video, which I doubt, but if you've never heard this and you watch my channel and you usually trust my recommendations, do yourself a favor and treat yourself to this record. It's really brilliant. And you Julian Cope fans, what's your favorite Julian Cope solo? I don't care about Teardrop Explodes, okay? I'm sorry. I was never a huge fan of theirs. I'm not talking about the teardrops. I'm talking about Julian Cope's solo stuff. What's your favorite Julian Cope solo record? For me, it's this. It'll always be this. I can't imagine Julian Cope ever doing anything better than this. This is a beautiful record. One of the best record, best records of the 90s. People, you know, 1991 was a huge year for, for albums. You go back and look at the long laundry list of brilliant records that came out in 1991. There are a lot. This would be way up there for me. Top 20 for sure. Maybe even top 10. I'd have to, I'd have to look at the list. But this is, I mean, you know, 1991 had Primal Scream, Screamadelica. It had that first electronic album. You know, Nirvana Nevermind was released that year. The KLF, The White Room. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, there are some, some serious, serious albums that came out that year. For me, this is definitely, definitely way up there. And love this album. Check this out if you never have. You're in for an unmitigated treat. Julian Cope. And listen to anything from Julian Cope. Because the guy's a stud. He's He's a... 
he's got a brilliant personality. He's a brilliant artist. He's really funny. He's a great writer. He, he loves music. He's got true passion for his art and other people's art. And I love that about him. I will always love Julian Cope. I will always love Peggy Suicide. And I will always love you people for watching my channel. Thank you very much. And until next time, goodbye.